What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you today. So in today's video we're going to talk about an extension from Fredo 6 that helps you cut openings inside of objects in SketchUp. So this extension was voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Patreon is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing on this channel, you want to vote on the extension that I cover every week, you can check out that link in the notes down below. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so you can download this extension, which is called Visual from Fredo 6 from the Sketchication plugin store. And I will link to this in the notes down below. Note this donate button. If you do like what Fredo is doing, please consider supporting him so he can keep creating amazing extensions for SketchUp. But you can download this and you can install this. Uh, do note that you also need to have libfredo installed. Um, that's Fredo's collection of scripts that make most of his extensions work. You can also find that in the Sketchication plugin store. Um, but once you install this, what you're gonna get um, when you enable the extension is a little button right here that says stencil. And so if you click on the button that says stencil, you may recognize the kind of menu that you see at the top of the page for a lot of Fredo 6's extensions. And so if we take a look at this, notice how what it's giving me is it's giving me a currently selected stencil. So this is actually an image of the stencil that we're using in order to cut openings inside of your objects. And so there's a bunch of options in here and we'll take a look at a few of them right now. So at the moment, you're going to note that I have the option for drill through selection, selected. Well, what that means is that means that that's going to use this stencil and it's going to drill through whatever I click on. So if I was to mouse over this face, for example, notice how this isn't grouped or anything like that. And I was to single click, that's going to set a base point and then you can move your mouse and you can click again in order to set the location of your stencil. But if I click again, Notice how in its simplest form, this is just gonna cut a hole in this object where that stencil was. And so now let's say that this object had some thickness associated with it like this. So I'm gonna push pull it and then let's run the extension again. So we're just gonna mouse over this face. We're gonna click and then click again. Notice how that's going to come in here and that's gonna cut your opening in both faces. And so notice how right now I don't have any tubes created in here, meaning that my wall is kind of hollow. Well, if you uncheck this box, in, box right here for do not create tubes, and then run this again, what that's gonna do, whoops, it jumped around on me. Here we go. What that's gonna do is that's basically gonna extrude through this wall using the stencil that you have selected. And so let's say that we had a wall that was grouped. So I'm gonna take my example stuff and move it over just a little bit. And let's create a wall that's grouped. So I'm gonna take this whole thing, I'm gonna push pull it up, then I'm gonna triple click on it, I'm gonna make it a group. So now let's try running this again. So if I mouse over this, click again, and we'll set this at kind of an odd angle so that we get all the holes in here. Notice how it didn't matter that this was grouped because this extension works on group geometry. And there are a couple different things you can check in here um, having to do with the way that the groups and components are nested. So you can kind of play around with those. I don't wanna to go too far down that path in this video. But let's say that you didn't wanna use this stencil anymore. Let's say that you wanted to get um, a custom stencil. Well, you can do that simply by clicking on this button right here, which is called pick a stencil shape in the model. So now I can just mouse over an object and I can pick a stencil shape. Notice how the place where I put my mouse when I do this is important because that's gonna set my base point for my object. So let's say for example that I wanted this door frame shape. I could mouse over it and then click on the corner. Well notice how now when I mouse over something, I'm getting a shape inside of my model based on the base point that I had selected. So I can come in here and within this grouped geometry, I can now use this to cut an opening. So I'm just going to click. And so notice how nothing is happening. That's because I don't have this object selected, but I do have this one selected. If I just hit the escape key like this and then mouse over this, notice how this turns blue. Well now, if I click on this face, this is gonna cut a hole in this object. So it's really easy to create custom stencils inside of SketchUp with this tool. And so let's say, for example, that we wanted to create a new stencil. So we're gonna pick this stencil right here. But now what I want is I wanna create a window that follows along this object, right? Because right now if I do this and I move my mouse out and I click, 
this is going to go in here kind of diagonally, right? You see this kind of like weird diagonal cut through this object because it's basically taking this plane and going straight out from it. What we're going to do instead, I'm going to do a control Z. So we're going to select this option for follow the surface of the selection. So then if I click on this, I'm going to single click, move my mouse along the red axis. Well, notice how now that effect is much less pronounced because it's using this cut um, in order to, or it's using, it's projecting along the curve of this object like this. And so not only can you use this to cut holes, you can also use this to emboss shapes or carve shapes. So for example, let's say that you've got a surface like this one and you need to cut a footprint into it. So we've talked about different ways to do this in the past, but let's say that this was the size of our footprint. Well, let's just pick a stencil shape. In this case, we'll pick this object right here. And what we wanna do is we wanna select the option for carve. So we wanna select carve right here. And I'll go ahead and select this second option as well. But now if I click and I move my mouse and I'm gonna tap the up arrow key like this, but notice how this'll carve a cut into this face based on this value. So let's say we wanted this to be four feet instead. So let's type in a value of 48 inches, do the same thing, and click. We'll notice how this is going to cut 48 inches into the object right here instead. So you can use this to quickly create flat shapes on curved objects like this. And so as another example, you could also take some group text like this, and you could either carve into this face or you could emboss it, meaning you could add to the face. So the carve is pretty simple, right? We've already selected this. I'm gonna uncheck this box and I'm gonna set this to 12 inches, right? Well, what we wanna do is we wanna pick a stencil shape. So in this case, that's just gonna be our text right here. Well, notice how it uses my text in order to create a stencil shape. And we wanna make sure we have this option right here selected, but I'm just gonna single click, move my mouse, and then click again. We need to make sure that we have this object selected. Well, notice how what that's doing is that's coming in here and that's carving 12 inches into this face. So you can use this to cut something based on a depth that you select. So let's say you wanted it to be four inches deep. You could just adjust that. We'll just click again. Notice how the depth on that one is a lot less than the depth on this one. And then finally, let's say that you didn't want this to go in the shape, but rather you wanted it to create some text that goes outward. Well, you could select the option for emboss instead. So when you select the option for emboss and leave everything else the same, what that's gonna do is that's gonna extrude this out on this face instead of in. So notice how I was able to use this to add to this curved face instead. And the same rules apply, meaning if I was to set this to 12 inches and then do the same thing, so single click, single click, that's gonna create this outward 12 inches. So this is actually a really powerful tool, not only for cutting openings, but also adding geometry inside of SketchUp. All right, so that's from in this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Have you tried this extension before? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. So if you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.